Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on analog modulation. Our topic for today's discussion is to focus on the power spectrum in amplitude modulation. This will be the part seven series discussion on analog modulation. Okay, I probably will do one more, okay, part eight, in order to conclude the discussion on analog modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe buttons. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more info from this channel. Thank you so much. This is what we have learned based on the previous few video. This is the amplitude spectrum of amplitude modulation. There are three components, as you can see from this diagram here in the frequency or amplitude spectrum. We correlate them into power spectrum Okay, from the power spectrum, there are also three components. So instead of the VP, okay, now we denote this as power of the carrier, power of lower sideband, and power of upper sideband. Okay, so the power of lower sideband is symmetric with the power of upper sideband. So they have exactly the amplitude, as you can see from here. Hence, the power should be also the same. So now we are going to learn how to describe this power okay, in this video. Okay, again, this is what we have learned previously. So in order to calculate power, okay, I think you should know this formula is B squared divided by R. Okay, one thing we need to take note, this B in fact is a RMS value. Okay, but whatever that we describe in the amplitude spectrum, they are all BP. Okay, so we need to correlate them back into RMS before we can calculate the power. So this is the formula to convert VP to RMS. Okay, V RMS is equal to VP divided by square root two. So once we have this, okay, we can start to convert them from VP to RMS value. Okay, so this is what we have obtained. So this is VP over root two. So I need to square this term, okay, which is exactly by this term here. So I open up my bracket, VP. Okay, so square root two, and then I have a square. So it disappeared. So my effect is two. So I relate everything. This is my power of the carrier, which is VP squared divided by two R. Okay, so next, this is what I have shared with you. The VP value, okay, you can see from here. Okay, for carrier, the VP is EC. So I put my EC here. So this is my carrier power. Okay, the power at the lower side band and the power of upper side band, they are exactly the same. Okay, so again, from here, we are ready to calculate. Remember, this is the VP. Okay, the VP for them is MEC over two. So again, this need to be squared. So this squared, EC squared, okay, and then two squared, I become four divided by two R. So I rearrange the formula. Okay, so they become this term here. Okay, so next, I'm ready to calculate the total power. So from here, this is a double sideband full carrier. Okay, I need to calculate the power of the carrier, lower sideband and also upper sideband. Putting them all together is the total power. This is what we have derived early on. So this is the carrier power. Okay, so if not, you can take a look over here. This is the carrier power. So we obtain the carrier power here. Okay, this is the upper sideband and the lower sideband. Okay, either one will do. They are exactly the same. I can combine these two into one. Okay, so they are exactly the same. So instead of 8R, they become 4R. So next, I can take up the common factor. Okay, I can see that EC squared divided by 2R is the common factor. So I take up this. So this can become one. So I take out EC squared, I take out 2R. So what I left is M squared, which is the modulation index developed by 2. Okay, so from here, I know that this is my power carrier. So I replace them. So I actually have a much simplified to define the total power 
with respect to the carrier power and also the modulation index. So this is the total power of double sideband full carrier. So if the question given to you is double sideband full carrier, okay, you can easily use this formula to compute the total power. What you need to do is you need to find your carrier power and you need to know your modulation index, then you are good to go to find the total power. Next, this is double sideband suppressed carrier, which means that I do not have any carrier at all. So the total power is the lower sideband plus the upper sideband, okay, which is shown over here. Okay, so again, this uh what we have found earlier on. Okay, so they are exactly the same term, so I can put them together. So this is the total power of double sideband suppressed carrier. Again, from here, okay, I like to express them okay, with the respect to the carrier power. So I know that carrier power is EC squared divided by 2R. So I take this EC squared out and take 2R out. I left this M squared over 2. So this again, so how can we represent the total power with respect to carrier power and also modulation index? Again, okay, after getting the carrier power and also we know the modulation index, we can easily compute the total power. Okay, last but not least, okay, single sideband suppressed carrier can be just the lower sideband or can be just be the upper sideband. So it's up to you. So they are exactly the same. So total power is either one of them. Okay, so let's do one. Okay, so this M squared EC squared divided by 8R. Okay, this EC squared divided by 2R is the carrier power. I like to bring them out. Okay, so therefore I can express them in term of carrier power and also modulation index. So from here, okay, you can also calculate the total power of single sideband suppressed carrier as long as you know the carrier power and also the modulation index. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.